All right, we're going to go over the work in simple machines problems. First, I want to talk about the results from the Polio Lab because we're kind of, kind of run out of time to deal with that. The ideal mechanical advantage, IMA, for a pulley system is going to be equal to the number of support strings. Now, when you did the lab, if you did it correctly, uh, you notice that when we had the setup, okay, here's my ring stand, and I have my pulley here, I have my box here, the mass, and I was pulling like that. This had ideal mechanical advantage of one. But yet also using a pulley system uh, with the pulley attached to the mass and the rope attached here, all of a sudden we had a mechanical advantage of two. We had to put in half the force to lift the object. Uh, but we also had to pull twice as far. And the reason why is because in this step here, there's one support string. In this step here, there's two. Both of these are pulling up on the object, where in this setup, only one is pulling up on the object. So it's the number of support strings gives you ideal mechanical advantage. Uh, if the string pulls down, you don't count that. If it pulls up, you do count it. Uh, so in the last step, you should get an ideal mechanical advantage of four because there are four support strings. Now, the actual mechanical advantage will be less because of friction and air resistance. Now, go on to the problems. Page 301, uh, this is a, number one shows an example Rube Goldberg machine. Identify two types of simple machines that are included in this compound machine. So a compound machine is just something that uses two or more simple machines. And a Rube Goldberg device was a combination of all of those. Uh, so in this example here, uh, you should be able to see that we have some levers. You can see a lever here. You can technically see a lever here. Uh, we have some pulleys. Technically, we have pulleys here and here and a couple other places. Uh, and technically, we also have a, a wedge in there. A wedge, you can think about like an axe head. So really any sharp point oftentimes can be thought about as a wedge. So three in there, combine them up. Number two, the efficiency of a squeaky pulley system is 73%. Now for this problem, you did have to look into the book. So that's how we can write out the efficiency. Pulleys are used to raise a mass to a certain height. What force is exerted on the machine if the rope was pulled 18 meters in order to raise a 56 kilogram mass, a height of three meters. So the efficiency could talk about which is 73%. means that the work that we get out is 73% of the work that we put in. So the work that we get out divided by the work we put in gives us that 0.73. Now, extending this out a bit, the work that we get out then is going to be the weight of this object times the distance that it moved. This is the distance we put in by some unknown force. So ours is in is F times 18 meters. And this guy is 3 meters for the distance. The force then is going to be the weight of this object. So that's at 58 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared to get the weight that times three meters. And so you have one unknown, 0.73. Now you need to solve for that. And you should get something that's approximately 130 newtons. Now, work on the math. If you have trouble with that, I'll go over that with you in class. Number three, a person lifts a 950 newton box by pushing up an incline. The person exerts a force of 350 along the incline. Mechanical advantage. So, whoop, sorry. The mechanical advantage then is going to be the force you get out versus the force you put in. And we get 950 newtons of force out versus the 350 newtons that we have to put in, which gives us a mechanical advantage of about 2.7. Number four, you're attempting to move a large rock using a long lever. Will the work you do on the lever be greater than, same than, less than the work done by the lever on the rock? Remember, you always have to put in more work than what you get out of the system because of things like friction. 
So the force, your work you do on the lever will be greater than what it does on the rock because of frictional forces. It will always be that way. And number five, a bicycle can be described as a combination of simple machines identify three types that are used to propel a bicycle. Uh, you have a pedal arm, which is a form of a lever. You have wheels, which are a form of a wheel. Okay, we're in trouble with that. Sorry. Wheel and axle. And you have a gear system. which is a form of a pulley. Page 171 through 4, tugboat pulls a ship with a constant horizontal force of 5 times 10 to 3 newtons, causes the ship to move through the harbor. How much work is done on the ship moves the distance of 3 kilometers, so work equals force times distance. So it's 5,000 newtons. Okay. 5,000 newtons times 3 kilometers or 3,000 meters. We have to switch over to that. So 15 million newton meters. Now, one newton meter is the same thing as a joule. And joule is just going to be a new unit we're going to use occasionally. I mean, it's the same thing as a newton meter, so you're just going to transition it. So instead of 15 million newton meters, you could say 15 million joules. Number two, a weightlifter lifts a set of weights a vertical distance of two meters. If a constant net force of 350 newtons exerted that net work. So work force times distance again. So 350 newtons times two meters. That gives us 700 newton meters or 700 joules. Number three, a shopper in a supermarket pushes a cart with a force of 35 newtons is directed at an angle of 25 degrees downward from the horizontal. Find the work done by the shopper in the cart. Again, sorry about all the mistakes, but the pen's just acting up today. So work is force times distance. Now because we're talking about a force that is downwards from the horizontal by an angle of 25 degrees, so there's my force here. My F of X force is in the horizontal direction. And remember that the force you apply has to be in the same direction as the motion. So if it's moving horizontally, my force is in the horizontal. So to find that horizontal force, F of X, F of X equals the main force times cosine of the angle. So we're going to plug that in here. And so i got to change that to FX. Because it's moving horizontally, it's not moving at an angle. Uh, and so that equals now 35 newtons times the cosine of 25 degrees times 50 meters. And we're going to get a lovely value of approximately uh, 1,600 newtons. Joules once you round it about. The uh, actual answer that you get will be a little bit about the same. Number four, 20 joules of work is done raising a 100 gram apple. How far is it lifted? I apologize, my pen is broken apparently. So work is force times distance. We want to find distance. We want to get that by itself. So distance equals work divided by force. In this case here, uh, two joules of work divided by the, the force involved here. Now, remember, force in this case is going to be equal to weight, which is mass times acceleration to gravity. The mass has to be in kilograms, so 180 grams becomes 0.18 kilograms, and we times it by the 9.81 meters per second squared, plug that in right there, and you should get a distance of about 1.1 meters. Now, I know I'm skipping some parts right here of the math, but if you have questions, see me. This is stuff you should be able to do. For each of the following statements, identify whether the everyday or scientific meaning of work is intended. 1A, Jack had to work against time as deadline neared. B, Jill had to work on her homework before she went to bed. And C, Jack did work carrying the pail. Both of these require no force. So, since no force is needed for those, only number 
sorry, only letter C is the one that would use a scientific mean of work, a force times displacement. The first two would just be in everyday use. Number two, if a neighbor pushes a lawnmower four times as far as you do, but exerts only half the force, which means he does more work by how much? So your work is equal to your force times the distance you move. Your neighbor's work, I'm just going to put a little N here for neighbors, he did half as much force, but four times the distance. So one half times four, that's two. So that means that your neighbor did twice as much work as you. Three, for each of the following cases, indicate whether work done on a second object in each example of positive or negative value. Uh, pretty much you can think about work if you increase the speed or increase the distance of an object, then you have positive work. If you slow things down, stop them, then you kind of have negative work. Road exerts a frictional force on a speeding car. That's going to be negative work. It works against the car. B, a rope exerts a force on buckets. Buckets is raised up a well. That's positive direction, so it's a positive work. Positive force equals positive work. Air exerts a force on parachutes. Parachutes slowly falls to earth. That's removing from it again, so it's negative work. It doesn't mean bad work. It just means it removes from it. Four, determine whether work is being done in each of the following examples. A train engine pulling oil boxcar initially rests. That's a yes. A tug of war that is evenly matched. If there's no displacement, there's no work. A crane lifting a car. Yes. So this is the only one which there is no displacement. Remember, work is force times displacement. If you're missing one of them, you're missing the whole thing. For number five, a worker pushes a 1.5 times 7 to 3 or 1,500 newton crate. So that's the weight of the crate. The horizontal force of 345 newtons, a distance of 24 meters. Assume the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the floor is 0.220. A, how much work is done by the worker on the crate? So we need to know his force times his distance. He applies a force of 345 newtons times a distance of 24 meters, which gives us a nice little work of about 8,280 joules. Sure. Answer, part B, work done by the floor in the crate. So in this case, the force is the frictional force. <clears throat> Remember that frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. In this case, coefficient of friction is 0 0.220. The normal force will be equal to the weight force because it's on a flat surface. And it moves the same 24 meters. So this will give us the frictional force times that. And the floor does, we could say negative 7.92 times 10 to the third joules, negative 7,920 joules. That's negative because ideally, or actually, this force should be negative because it's a frictional force. It's pulling away from that. So is the net force, you just add that up. 8,280 joules plus negative... 7,920 joules, and that'll get you your net force of around 360 joules. Number six, 0 0.05 kilogram ball in a kinetic sculpture raised 1.32 meters above the ground by a motorized vertical conveyor belt. Constant frictional force of 0.35 newtons acts in the direction opposite the conveyor belt's motion. What is the net work done on the ball? So in this case here, Network is either going to be equal to the differences between the two works involved, the work of the pulley, the conveyor belt pulling it up, and then the frictional force, or it can also be equal to the net force times the distance. And so for us, the net force is going to be the weight of the ball, because that's the force the conveyor belt has to apply, so 0 0.05 kilograms times 9.1 meters per second, that'll give us the weight of the ball. That minus the 0 0.35 newtons of the conveyor belt. Now, when we take those and multiply them out, 0 0.05 times 9.81 gives us approximately 0 0.736. So that minus 0 0.350 
gives us a frictional force 0.386 newtons. We then need to take that times the distance it moved to 1.32 and we should get a frictional force of approximately 0.51 joules. So your values may be a little bit different than that, but that's just a rounding error. If you have any questions, make sure you see me before the quiz on Friday. Quiz on Friday will cover what we've covered up this week, work, simple machines, and there will be a question on there dealing with conservation of momentum.